Catch him if you can. Here's your look at the DC Multiverse, Teen Titans, Kid Flash. Cousin of Wally West, this superpowered speedster joins the Teen Titans as Kid Flash. So the first thing we'll do is figure how tall. How tall exactly is Kid Flash? Well, to answer your question, if that was, by the way, the question you were asking, you're looking at 6.3 inches in height, which translates to those who favor centimeters. Here in Canada, we favor centimeters. You're looking at a figure that stands 16.1 centimeters tall. Now, to show you how that stacks up, how tall is this figure versus some of the other figures that we've already looked at? Some of the other figures only really being two other figures. This is a four-figure release, after all. Here he is next to Kyle Rayner. Here he is next to Kingdom Come Superman. You can see that they all have one thing in common. The one thing in common, by the way, is that they all have different bodies. Okay, that one is a bit of a stretch. But yes, the one thing consistently can be said for all of these is that they're using different molds. Kid Flash is considerably smaller than Kyle Rayner, and of course, Kingdom Come Superman is utilizing, at least from the torso up, the old DC Universe body. Now, being that this is a Lobo wave, this is what we've got so far. Okay, okay, okay that's not true. We've also got the legs as well. Why don't we actually do some building? We've done little in the way of collecting. Well, we have collected, but we've done very little in the way of connecting. So we're gonna go ahead and take the supplied arms that comes included with Kid Flash, and we're gonna pluck those, plank those, pop those, that's a better word to use to describe it, into the socketed sections of his torso. Again, I'm just gonna bring, the, bring that around. There we go. A very satisfying very satisfying if it will actually snap into place. Let's just take the necklace off for one second. There we go. That one actually, surprisingly, a disappointing snap. That didn't snap in place as well as this one right here. And uh, there we have Lobo. Now we can go ahead and add the necklace. We're still, of course, missing a head, missing the lower under ruse. And then from there, we can then add on to the legs. Still going to be a pretty small looking figure, sadly. I know I'm sounding like a broken record here. There's the front, there's the back. Uh, one other thing that he comes included with, although he's not going to be able to see what he's swinging this at, he comes with this hooked chain. Now, I love the fact that the chain feels like it's metal chain, like it's not plastic. It has a natural drape and flow to it that real chain would have. Um, again, it would look great eventually when we can get this guy put together. I'm guessing. A little birdie has told me it's probably likely the next review where we're going to finally see something coming into fruition when it comes to this guy right here. So for the time being, this is all we got to work with. Oh, oh, oh. And then, of course, a couple of legs as well. We will move that over to the side. We will proceed with the rest of this review. Kid Flash also comes included with a pair of flat palms, ideal for running if you want to have him running. Now, if they do look somewhat familiar. Let me just grab, this is the closest hand I had to me here. Uh, they are what looks to be Superman's hands just shrunk down. I can't help but notice that even like the lines on the palms are identical to one another. It would make logical sense, of course, for Mattel, making as most use out of their molds as possible to just take the same mold, shrink it down even further, and then fit that into the socket. Because I mean, really, after all, the pegs can stay. Well, even like the pegs are a little bit differently as well, but it does look like it's the same hand, minus for a fact that the Superman hand has a big line. I don't know if you can see it running around the, the front, running around this side, I should say, right here. It's a little bit more obvious on this hand here. You probably can see this big line cut right across there. So it does seem like they are the same hands, just a little bit smaller. If you want to change out those hands, just pop the peg out, finding the appropriate hand. There we go. These ones are very easy to pop out. Take that one out and replace it with this one here. And now you've got, bend his elbow here. There we go. There we go. You've got Kid Flash with the ability to run. 
Now, of course, all of this comes into play better if you have the mean, the meaning tools, the meaningful tools to actually be able to pull this off. He, in theory, does have a peg on the undersides of his feet. One here, one here. But unfortunately, he doesn't come with a display stand. So even though a great looking pose, uh, certainly an eligible pose for the way I want to display this figure, unfortunately, I don't have a necessary stand. Not included at the least, but I could probably find one kicking around here. Or maybe I might do this uh, in final looks, just a little, little FYI. Birdie's going to be, t Birdie just told you that. You told us that. Well, okay, I, I told you that. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just take these hands out. Something creepy about a figure just standing there in a museum pose with flat hands. I'm like, I don't know what he's doing. Is he planning something? Is he strategizing some big master scheme? Just creeps me right out. So I'm going to just replace those hands. One thing, though, is that one of the hands does have a gripping feature. You can see it's clearly meant to hold something, but this flash has nothing other than just all the accessories that we just looked at. No, I'm kid I kid you not. I'm not hiding anything. Oh, it's right over there. No, it no, it's, it's not. It's not over there. Don't even want. Shouldn't even want to tease that. So let's have a look at the figure. And I really, again, I'm quite impressed with this line. Uh, Kid Flash does have some great coloring to him. He he actually seems to break that trend of yellow painted yellow plastic figures, where they don't look like the paint is either not finished. Or like the yellow seems like it doesn't match to itself. Here, actually, I think they've done a pretty good job of matching even like the yellow in his mask to that of his torso. I mean, it's not dead on, but it's pretty close when you consider some of the other horrible yellow plastic figures that we've gotten before under the DC Universe line. This one actually fares quite well. Love the additional panel lining. Yes, uh, one of the obvious little nitpicks eventually I'll mention here. I'll just mention it right now. The yellow on the red plastic doesn't quite jive with what's happening up here. It's it's a little on the off side. But, you know, from a distance, I don't think it's as bad as, again, some of the other ones that we've seen before. At the very least, I don't feel like they would have gone the efforts to put the black panel uh, outlining there around the gloves. They probably would have just painted those in. I believe even like one of the worst culprits of this was a Kid Flash from the DC, again, the DC Universe line. Um, he's got the logo there done on the front. And pretty clean, again, logo. Head sculpt's looking good. I think I might actually have, basing it from the source material, I might have actually just brought the shade up on his skin tone, just one shade up. I think it's just a little too dark. Just like one shade up. Because I don't think it, it complements the yellow well. And if you look at the box artwork, and even like the prototype figures, I think actually the skin tone was just one shade lighter. As a little extra nod, I love the little lightning bolt that they've put into his hair there. The ears are a soft plastic. I don't feel there's the risk, the jeopardy that these are going to be breaking off. And it gives you something to do in the afternoon. You know, if you're just waiting for lunch to finish and mom and dad haven't called you down yet, you can just basically do this. Just for the next 45 minutes. I'm not going to do that for the next 45 minutes. Proportionally, he is a very slim figure. No doubt making use of molds that we will see with some of the whatever is left of these waves before McFarlane basically takes over. Um, he's got some nice treading, some pretty cool looking shoes, I have to admit. This is something that you easily would have missed because the figure half the time is probably going to be standing on his feet anyways. It's just neat that they would add all this extra detailing there on the under treads. In addition to that, I like also that his feet don't just use a regular foot. They've instead sculpted a heel and they've sculpted an additional front piece to his foot. And even then, they've raised additional little these little line blips there on either sides of his shoes. Well, again, I really like that. He's a, like I said, he's a really clean looking figure using really elements that by history have what, what history has told us. Um, these are just always problematic colors that the two of them never mix well. And usually any figure that has yellow and red collectively together where a lot of it is yellow, it's just a train wreck. Kid Flash, on the other hand, though, actually does look really good. I like that, again, the head sculpt paints very, very clean on this guy. And if even if you can overlook for the fact that the yellow 
doesn't quite jive with this section right here. He feels very complete. Like it feels like he went the full length of the painting line and they just, 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 this just didn't abruptly stop, go for their lunch and pack whatever was finished as it was. Let's have a look at his posability. His head rotates all the way around. It hinges also up and down. I noticed when you hinge it up and down, it does have a, can you hear that? It's got this clicking sound to it. It must be catching itself on a bit of plastic, maybe on the interior of its neck. Needless to say, like I said, the head rotates all the way around. Bean again, I'm gonna do this all afternoon. That would be crazy. Uh, these are soft, so again, you don't have to worry about those breaking off on you. Upper torso crunch, waist swivel. The arms go out. You can also rotate the arms all the way around. Has a rotation in the bicep, which in theory allows the arms to rotate all the way around. A hinge on the elbow, slightly a little bit more limited, unfortunately. It For what it is, it does allow the, the arm to bend to about there. Um, this just doesn't give you nearly enough of a hinge right there on the inside. If it was just a little bit longer, you may be able to bring the arm up just a little bit more. It does cause for a little bit of a cut, but we're not going to nitpick the small details that our hands rotate all the way around and you can hinge them back and forth. Uh, for the legs, the legs split, 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 and uh, they go forward, they go back, swivel on the boat three-quarter cut on the thigh, a double hinge on the knee, which I love the fact that these are double hinges. Feet go back and forth, and yes, slightly, well, a bit of a slight, a little bit more of a slight, there's an ankle rocker there as well. Yeah, really a fully finished, fully realized Kid Flash. Digging the look of this guy. Do I like him say as much as Kyle Rayner. Now, Kyle Rayner sort of is setting the bar if anybody is keeping score right now. My own score is telling me that Kyle Rayner sort of is ahead in the lead here in the polls, but Kit Flash comes very close. One thing to his credit is he's very bright. He's got a lot of colorings to, coloring to him, and none of the plastic in the yellow, nor is the paint messy. Like I said, this guy feels fully finished all the way around. In Final Looks, I'm utilizing a circular clear display stand. You're probably seeing it right now. That's the only way I can get Flash in any bit of a dynamic pose because normally the figure, just by the way he's designed, doesn't allow for a figure to do this just balancing on his own. So I'm using a clear stand to balance the Teen Titans member, Kid Flash, and it does look quite good. I wish these guys could come with display stands. I don't feel like I'm really asking all that much as a reviewer or a collector of these things myself. I would love to see more display stands utilized. I guess if back in the day you were lucky enough to pick up one of those sets of DC Universe stands, you know, those blue ones, you probably already have a hundred or so of those kicking around somewhere, then you could probably use it for Kid Flash. But I'd like to use something a little bit more subtle. So I probably will see if I can find more of these clear stands kicking around. Stressed again, I want to do stress this again, is not included with this figure. But I'll see if I can find more of these because I'd like to put them in a little bit more of a creative pose simply than just having them standing straight. Now again, I love the coloring here on Kid Flash. He does things very well. This would be a setting block, I think, for older figures to look at. Sort of the measuring stick as what can be done successfully when utilizing two of the biggest problem colors when designing and painting figures, red and yellow. If you've ever looked at red and yellow figures, at least of older figures and DC Universe figures, you probably know that red and yellow combined don't tend to work too well, especially when yellow is primarily the color. I think still to this day, one of the worst figures that I've reviewed was the Kid Flash. Not this Kid Flash, but the original Kid Flash from the DC Universe was really just a horrible paint job. From what I remember, I'm going to have to probably go back and watch one of those older reviews of mine just to see if that is actually the case or if my mind's just playing tricks on me. Either way, though, I like the coloring on this one. He certainly has stood out among the uh, the darker colors, the blues and the greens and the blacks that we've seen with the previous two figures, the two outings that we've looked at so far on this channel. Now, we are, if you are keeping your tally, one figure away from finishing Lobo. We still have to look at the Batman Beyond, which also works out in the favor of my own personal interest because I really wanted to pick up the Batman Beyond. I really think he's the star of the show. And for that reason and that reason alone, and for the fact, of course, I want to put together all of Lobo and I want to really end it off with adding his head. 
I were also looking at Batman Beyond. So it's sort of a twofold that Batman Beyond ends up being the last figure that we're going to have a look at. Scratch that. The last figure we're going to, of course, have a look at is Lobo when everything is put together. Either way, if you guys are interested in picking up this set for yourself, it's a small enough set so it's easy to find if you can find it in your local retail stores. Today we were having a look and continuing our looks at the DC Multiverse. This was the Lobo Collect and Connect, and this was Teen Titans Kid Flash. Hey you! Yes, you. The guy in the back. The guy that's looking around right now to think I'm actually talking to you. Yes, I am. Yeah, you. You, sir. The one with the blue scarf. I don't know why you're wearing a blue scarf. It's summertime. But if you haven't, hit that little subscribe button down below. He's currently pointing at himself. Me? He says. Yes. Yeah, you. If you haven't hit the subscribe button down below yet, what are you waiting for? You, specifically, sir. Or I'll just pretty much address the entire audience if you guys haven't hit that little subscribe button. You know the one that's just below this video yet. You know what you're missing out on? You're missing out on over 7,000, can't even believe I said that myself, 7,000 videos currently on this channel, currently growing every single day. That's what you're currently missing out on. More videos certainly like this will follow. And as always, guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.